What's up everyone? I'm Tim and this is my channel 40 Times Around where we talk about everything related to motorcycles, camping, travel, and adventure. So today I want to start a series talking about some animals you should be aware of if you're motorcycle camping in North America. I am going to do a whole episode on black bears and brown bears and just bears in general because I think there's a lot more involved in that. Uh, food storage I'll probably either include with that or maybe do a whole episode on proper food storage. Uh, it's pretty important stuff with pretty much any animal. Today we're going to talk about three animals that are pretty common in Arizona and that's going to be javelina, coyote, and mountain lions. So this is by no means an all-encompassing video. This is just kind of some general guidelines, little information to get you at least thinking about animals if you're traveling or even if you're sightseeing or camping or motorcycle camping in North America. Uh, you should definitely familiarize yourself and, and do a little bit of your own research. Go talk to the forestry department, uh, someone with, that works with BLM. Uh, get some information on current activities with animals and things that you should be aware of. There may be certain issues with specific animals in the area you're traveling in. You want to familiarize yourself with that. The first one is going to be a javelina. Uh, it looks like a wild boar. It's a hooved mammal. They are originally from South America. You can see them all over Arizona, uh, typically not so much in northern Arizona, but definitely central and southern Arizona. I see them all the time in Phoenix, Scottsdale. Uh, I know they're pretty common down in Tucson too. They, they do travel in herds of anywhere from like two to upwards of 20 at a time. Uh, I've seen some pretty big groupings of them, especially in Scottsdale. It's, it's actually pretty neat to see them, you know? I mean, we all like seeing wild animals, right? I think the key thing is that we just don't get overexcited and, and you know getting that perfect picture for Instagram and, and getting a little too close to them. Havelina, they're gonna weigh anywhere from 40 to 60 pounds and they're gonna be most common in areas with dense vegetation. I see them pretty often near, near prickly pear cactus. Uh, they seem to really like eating those. So if you're camping, you might not wanna be too close to those because you may encounter some Havelina at night. Uh, if you do happen to encounter some Havelina, Chances are they're just going to go on about their business, but if you feel threatened by them or if they're kind of maybe paying a little too much attention to you or, or getting a little curious, you can scare them off by just making a little noise. Definitely don't put a javelina in a situation where they're going to feel trapped. They will charge and it's not going to be a good thing for you. Uh, the big things with javelina are don't feed them. Don't leave your food out. This is going to be a common theme throughout all the animals that we're going to talk about. Um, particularly fruit, even garbage. Just don't leave any of that stuff out because it will definitely attract javelina. Javelina is not an animal you need to be super concerned with. It's pretty cool to see these in the wild and they typically leave you alone. It's pretty rare that they do attack people. They can be aggressive and they can definitely do some damage if they want to, if they feel threatened or scared. But typically that only really happens when people are interacting with them or trying to feed them or, or just getting too close to them. So enjoy it from a distance, kind of leave them alone unless you feel threatened by them and just scare them off. They're really not hard to scare away, but it is something that can become a dangerous situation if you're not careful and you're not informed about them. That's kind of the gist of Havelina. Uh, not a super threatening animal as long as you don't provoke it or scare it. Uh, the next animal we're going to talk about is coyotes. These are super common. I've seen them all over the United States. You'll see them a lot, even in developed areas, not just out in the wild, but you'll see them on golf courses and, and in neighborhoods even. This animal is part of the canine family. They're going to weigh anywhere from about 15 to 30 pounds. Coyotes are pretty much going to eat anything they can get their hands on. This could be garbage, uh, leftover food. So again, food storage is going to be important. Uh, you're also, if you travel with a pet, with a dog or anything like that, you're going to want to keep an eye on that dog, especially if it's a smaller dog. Coyotes will eat pets. Uh, it's pretty sad, but it does happen. Uh, and a coyote is an animal that can either be traveling alone or with a pack, so you never really know if you're seeing one, if it's the only one or not. If you do happen to encounter a coyote, uh, some things to remember are that you definitely have the upper hand with a coyote. It's going to be all about displaying dominance with it with a coyote. Number one thing is don't approach it. Don't try to get close to it. Don't feed it. Don't, you know, try to get a close-up picture of it. 
make sure that you maintain eye contact with it. This is going to display dominance and this should hopefully scare it off. Uh, again, like with most animals, you can make some noise to scare it off. I, I strongly recommend <laughs> and uh, you definitely should not run from a coyote. You will spark its instinct to chase and it's, it's going to run after you. Um, this is one of those things where like coyote attacks are very rare and and are provoked typically by people misinterpreting a situation and and getting scared and running from a coyote the coyote's gonna chase you that's just what they do uh, if you don't run and you stand your ground make a little noise there's a really good chance they're just gonna take off running it is possible that a coyote could be rabid it's fairly uncommon though but that is something to be aware of uh, the good news is that coyotes are typically pretty timid animals. They don't really like humans. You really shouldn't have too many problems with them. Again, as long as you're keeping your food properly stored while you're camping, uh, you really shouldn't have any problems with coyotes. The next animal we're going to talk about, I have never seen one in the wild. I would absolutely love to see one from a, from a distance, from quite a distance, and that is a mountain lion. Uh, these are just super elusive. I've seen just about every animal that exists in North America in the wild. I have never seen a mountain lion. So I, I would imagine they're, they're fairly rare to encounter, but let's just go over some things that you should know and, and be aware of because preventative action is going to be key. Uh, you certainly don't want to be surprised by a mountain lion showing up at camp. These things are like the James Bond of the animal world in North America. They are just insanely skilled predators. Uh, they can be super dangerous. They could weigh anywhere from 70 to 150 pounds and it's going to be just all muscle. I read that there's anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 mountain lions living in Arizona alone, which is pretty terrifying. That seems like a pretty high number to me. Uh, they primarily eat deer, also javelina, bighorn sheep, elk, and other small animals. Uh, again, keep your pets safe if you're in mountain lion territory. Typically, mountain lions are going to stalk and ambush prey from a high up point. Uh, they're going to be up on ledges and things like that. That's kind of their main tactic. Uh, their main form of attacking is to do it from above. Uh, like I said, they are super elusive. They don't like to be found. So there's a really good chance, even if you came close to one, you probably wouldn't even know about it. And this is an animal that can actually be found anywhere from Canada down to South America. Uh, if you do happen to encounter one, just don't trap it. Don't make it feel like it's trapped. Like I said, they, they don't really want to have anything to do with you. So typically, they're going to just leave you alone as long as they're not provoked or you don't make them feel trapped or in any way frightened or threatened. Again, very important, do not run from a mountain lion. They will catch you. It's important if you encounter a mountain lion to stay calm. Uh, try to keep a cool head. Maintain eye contact with the animal. Again, this will establish dominance and make some noise. It should scare them off. One thing you can do is make yourself big. Put your arms up, you know, open your jacket, just appear larger than you are. Uh, this is gonna scare them off too. And again, making any kind of noise. One more thing, absolutely positively do not turn your back to a mountain lion. If anything, if you have to kind of escape the situation, slowly back away. Don't turn your back and walk away from it. If worse comes to worst, fight back. Uh, if you get a rock or a stick or anything and you hit it, uh, you know, just because it attacks you doesn't mean that's game over. You have a chance to at least hurt it enough to get it running and then get yourself to safety. So, so just because, you know, if you happen to encounter one, that doesn't mean an attack. An attack doesn't mean death. So if you see one, try to scare it off, get it to go away. If it does attack you, fight back with, with everything you can and uh, there's a pretty good chance you'll get it to take off running. So the big thing is, you know, if you're walking around exploring on foot is that you're making noise. If you're on your bike, I don't imagine you really have to worry about it too much. This is more off the bike camping. Some interesting facts about mountain lions that might give you nightmares tonight. A mountain lion can consume an entire deer in two nights and they can jump 20 feet vertically, which is absolutely terrifying and 40 feet horizontally in a single jump. That is, that is pretty scary. <laughs> 
Anyways, that's about it for today's video and the three animals we're covering in this particular episode. Again, like I said, you should definitely do further research if you're going somewhere where you know there's potential to encounter one of these animals or anything else that might be dangerous. Matter of fact, I'll probably do a video about reptiles to worry about too. That would be snakes and things like that. Uh, maybe incorporate, you know, scorpions and spiders. I think I've had a few questions about that. Living in Arizona, uh, I see scorpions once in a while um, and other dangerous reptiles and, and spiders and things like that so I'll probably do an episode about smaller critters but anyways that's it for today like I said uh, if you got something out of this video make sure to give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already that way you don't miss anything whenever I post something new about motorcycles camping travel and adventure thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video